the Maryland Terrapins bring their tradition-rich high standards to Michigan Lacrosse Stadium, home of the reigning Big Ten Tournament champion Wolverines, who are eager to host this top 20 matchup on Big Ten Network. It is great to see you again. Thrilled to be alongside Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. Last season, the Wolverines knocked off the Terrapins twice by convincing margins. Mark, how much stock should Michigan take from those two victories? A ton, and not only was it confidence and the emergence of the Michigan program, one of those wins was in the regular season, but the second one came in the championship of the Big Ten Tournament. It's a big day here for Michigan lacrosse, and don't think that's been lost on the Maryland Terrapins, who has been the standard bearer of this conference in men's lacrosse. This season, Maryland has not been dominating on offense, but Braden Irksa is one player who can have a great influence on that. The sophomore out of the Atlanta area is electric. He was the 2023 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. When he came to College Park, they really didn't expect a ton out of the slender attackman, but he delivered last year with timely goals, great vision. He has become Maryland's most prolific offensive threat. Definitely one to watch. If you flip the script, you'll find Wolverine attackman Michael Bame ready to pounce at a moment's notice. Not the biggest player size-wise, but his impact on this Michigan lacrosse program is immeasurable. The most outstanding player of last year's Big Ten Championship Tournament. He returns this year as more of a leader of this Michigan attack. Let's introduce you to the net miners, the Terps. Mark, they go back with Logan McNaney, back to the goal with a very rich resume. Absolutely. Uh, knee injury a year ago, trying to round into that All-American form from 2022. As for Michigan, Hunter Taylor gets the call, and we saw him first take flight around tournament time last spring. Hunter Taylor took his bow at Homewood Field, leading this Michigan Wolverine team to a Big Ten championship. Terps ranked eighth. Michigan number 20 in the polls. Five and two against five and three. A couple of guys at the end of the alphabet at the face-off exits. Wheatfelt going right to the goal. Snared quickly by McNaney. Wheatfelt and Weirman throughout the day will be a terrific clash at the face-off X. It's going to be interesting to see Wheatfelt for the first time on our air this year. It was a double-headed monster between him and Nick Rowlett last season. He is going the distance this year as the number one and then you got Luke Weirman, who is the Nolan Ryan of Kyle's lacrosse faceoff men. He will go the full nine. Ryan Syracuse has the ball, 38 in the red for Maryland. Working here with Eric Spanos. First touch for the Terps. Spanos, kick it to the wing, that's Jack Chorus. Sweeping, trying to get top side. No room afforded him by Bo Pedersen. Molliver angles in, handled there by Rowan Clay. Turning the corner, Syracuse has snapped that one high. On the backup, it'll stay Maryland possession. 28 seconds to shoot. Terrific development from Syracuse so far in 2024. Molliver off the pick. Missed it there, too high. He had a good open look from a bad angle. Yeah, I think he could have taken the one extra step bad angle. Perfect way to describe it. I think he thought a slide was coming that wasn't there. Just getting going in this one from the University of Michigan Lacrosse Stadium. They were expecting a standing room only crowd today. It's a beautiful sunny day. Temperatures in the mid 30s, however. Syracuse picked up by Clay. Pass is too tall for Spanos and that's saying something. He's six foot five. No doubt. And that's not good news for the Maryland Terrapins. 18 turnovers a week ago against the University of Virginia. Very uncharacteristic. Maryland is not a, typically a team that beats itself. John Tillman, the coach for Maryland, was talking about needing to play a more clean game today. That wasn't the case on the first touch. Maryland watching as Michigan goes to work six on six. Yeah, this Michigan team coming off of a 10 goal loss to Notre Dame. Maryland, of course, lost at home 14-10 to Virginia, but this is the second season, as the coaches like to call it. Conference play, and hope springs eternal. Cohen, feed it inside, bullseye. Justin Tiernan has been a fantastic finisher so far for Michigan. Fans here. Capacity crowd at University of Michigan Lacrosse Stadium. They love it. Tiernan, the transfer from Lehigh. Ryan Cohen, excellent vision. Such a balanced player, draws a double team. And look at Tiernan, sweep, 
across the face of the goal. Maryland guilty of ball watching on that. Tiernan benefits. Procedure against Weirman gives Michigan the ball back. Tiernan, who began this day number one in the nation in terms of goals per game, four per outing for the Wolverines. As you can tell, top of the screen, leading the Big Ten Conference in goals overall. Ajax Zapatello drawing a bead on Bain. That's an all-conference hookup and a one-on-one -on -one matchup to watch throughout the day. Two terrific players. This close defense for Maryland, arguably one of the best, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country. So the ball watching, a little uncharacteristic. You had the uncharacteristic turnover. This is a perfect start for the Michigan Wolverines. Zapatello, Canfield, and Burleys, the starting close defenders for Maryland. As the Terps get possession of the ball, we close in on the three-minute mark of the opening quarter. Tiernan, the lone goal scorer for the Wolverines, here at home dressed in white. Moving pick, called on Michigan. That's a big call. Michigan uses picks maybe more than any team in the conference. You better believe John Tillman was talking to the officiating crew before the game about watching for some of those illegal screens. Both coaches said that their teams worked extensively this week in practice on pick plays, both offensively and defensively. Into the alley, no shooting room there for Daniel Kelly. Kelly who potted a couple of goals in a loss against Virginia last week. Irks are rolling back and he's denied a clean stop for Hunter Taylor. Good save by Taylor, good shot by Irksa. Michigan right now playing good defense. And Taylor with those early, at that early save, that'll get him going, warm him up in this chilly Ann Arbor afternoon. Snowbanks surrounding the sidelines here at the University of Michigan Lacrosse Stadium. Backpedaling away from the pressure. John Morgan in that second midfield unit for Coach Connery's Wolverines. Just about halfway through the 80 second shot clock. Bo Lockwood, maybe Michigan's most skilled offensive player, a great distributor. He'll work in concert with Bain. Bain looking to get away from Zapatello. Bain now has a short stick defensive assignment. Working in against Sharkey. Mulholland keeping it hot for Cohen. Shot clock down to 12. Ryan Cohen, who has goals in all eight games this season. Stepping out there. Flick it back, short side. Score! Morgan. Maryland creates offense for this Michigan unit. Really no need to slide. You will see number 47 in red, Nick Red, leaves. And then that just opens up the backside. Morgan taking the feed from Cohen. Two terrific players hooking up. And Maryland, again, just a little too anxious on the defensive end. As we welcome you to Lacrosse on the Big Ten Network. Joe Beninati, Mark Dixon with you in Ann Arbor, Michigan today. The Big Ten Conference opener for these two squads. Maryland at five and two, Michigan at five and three. Both teams ranked among the top 20. As you join us after session one of Big Ten Women's Gymnastics. Two goals on the board for the team in white. Justin Tiernan and John Morgan have given the homestanding Wolverines the early cushion almost six minutes into the opening quarter. And what a great start, huge day here. They're honoring the 2023 Big Ten champions this afternoon. Sellout crowd on hand, it's been sold out for two weeks now, standing room only. This is exactly the start Michigan was hoping to get. Momentum, the crowd behind them. Maryland needs to find a way to make a play and quell this Michigan momentum. Plenty of excitement in the stands, Mark. It's alumni weekend here as Lockwood feeds it up top. Mulholland. Getting loose from the long stick midfielder, McDonald. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Lockwood will try on Burleys. Burleys keeps him at sticks length. Off the roll dodge, nothing there. McNaney eats it up from that poor angle. Clearing time for the Terps. Yeah, not the best shot for Michigan. Low angle, McNaney gobbles that thing up. Bottom of the screen, folks, you can see the starting lineups for these two squads today. 
Offside call, going to give the ball back to Michigan as we near the midway mark of this opening quarter. Yeah, unofficially about the third turnover for the Terrapins so far here in the first quarter. Again, 18 last weekend against Virginia. Maryland just doesn't turn the ball over with that type of regularity. They're really going to have to clean some things up. They look a little nervous out there. Sure do. Coach Tillman was talking about executing at a faster level this week. It has not turned out that far in the first uh, seven minutes. Ready to go from the perimeter. This is Christian Ronda. They're waiting for him to emerge and really pop loose. An offensive threat in that top midfield unit. Ball down. First time grounder for Jackson Canfield. The transfer from Vermont gets Maryland the ball back. Yeah, Ronda, one of those Princeton transfers, joining Bo Pedersen on this Michigan team. A little bit of a force in the bank. Credit Maryland, good defense. Slap check, creates the ground ball. They clean, uh, clearly clean it. Spano set to go. He has goals in six of seven this season for the Terps. Waiting for Ryan Syracuse to jog in off the sideline. Gets past Justin Ennis, the short stick defensive midfielder. Terps work at six on six. Spanos is an igniter for this group. Trying to get under. Now working inverted. Swims past the defender, is stopped there as Hunter Taylor had the post secured. And you can see a difference in Maryland's offense right away, Joe. The ball in the stick of Spanos for what, about seven to 10 seconds. That is not typically Maryland lacrosse. It's bang, 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 but they've had to rely more on the one-on-one -on -one matchups here in 24. This is the beginning of Big Ten conference play. Throughout their non-conference schedule, though, Maryland averaging below 12 goals per game. That's usually significantly higher at this time of season. A little bit of disruption, uh, the coaching staff, when you had uh, Jake Bernhardt take the Colby job and Michael Phipps came over right after the new year. So a little bit of time to gel, but really it's been an execution type situation with Maryland. Good stick check in the open field. Unsettled for Lockwood. Keeps it hot there, walking in. McNeeny, a huge stop as he robbed Bain. Wow, what a save by Logan McNaney. We talk about him trying to round back into All-American form. The one-on-one, -on -one, great vision. I think this place would have exploded had Bain been able to convert, but denied by McNaney. That marked that one down. That is a game-changing, momentum-shifting kind of save. Coaches for the Terps saying they've gone back to fundamentals with McNaney after that long absence due to the injury, that it's not necessarily just plug and play for him. Going through the steps, making sure he's not over moving. Looks sharp so far, despite he and his mates being down by two. Wasn't fully cleared to play until after the new year into the February month, and that's big. When you can't run outside the cage, can't plant, really throw those outlet passes, that is a huge stop for number 30 in red. Time out on the field. We'll get you back to the University of Michigan here in Ann Arbor. The guys in red looking for their first strike with Michigan on top by two. Justin Tiernan and John Morgan back to back from Michigan, a two nothing lead for the Wolverines over their guests from College Park. Under the direction of John Tillman, spectacular record in his 14 seasons with Maryland. Two national championships, they have been the standard in Big Ten men's lacrosse and obviously being challenged and the new kids in the block, if you will. Michigan taking home their first title a spring ago, but Maryland, they are always lurking, always dangerous. Molliver has possession back behind the cage. Closing in on five minutes left to play in this opening quarter with lacrosse on Big Ten Network. Sun splash day in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Temperatures in the mid thirties. Murphy sailed that one high and way wide. Sprinting from the cage to win that to back up on the sideline there. It's the netminder, Hunter Taylor. Closest to the ball and a missed shot where and when it leaves the field, gets possession. We, we've seen Molliver come around the cage and airmail one. Now we saw Murphy get to a great spot. It's 30 degrees here in Ann Arbor. And I'm not trying to say that the weather has that much effect on the sticks, but when you're coming from Maryland where it's been 45, 50, last weekend it was 70 degrees during the Virginia game, maybe Michigan a little bit, you know, with the hardware, maybe a little bit more used to this cold weather. Usually I ask you how rain affects the pockets and how it affects the offense, but it is definitely cold. Thankfully, Mark has decided to go with the windows closed here in the booth. <coughs> Cohen off the roll dodge. That pass will get away from Lockwood. It's a turnover back to Maryland. 
and that is not good for Michigan when your defense is playing so well, giving you these opportunities you have to cash in. Second empty possession for Michigan, turning it over on two consecutive trips. McNaney will haul it ahead. Colin Burlace is a junior from Edgewater, Maryland. McNaney and the Terps in the clearing game. That pass is over top of the head of Jack Chorus. Another turnover for Maryland. They're roaring on the sidelines here in Ann Arbor. Again, the, the more this crowd gets into it, the more of an uphill climb it becomes for Maryland. Look, they're, they're not lost. It's not lost on the fact that as Michigan returns the favor, that they're unfurling the banner and they are honoring the Big Ten champions here today. Maryland's well aware of that. And I put a little extra pep in their step this week in prep. You saw the quick cutaway of head coach uh, Kevin Connery for Michigan. He said it was a porous off-ball performance against Notre Dame, a Notre Dame team that has tremendous offensive weapons. They've been more buttoned up today, tangling against uh, the Maryland Terrapins with 3.40 to go in the opening quarter. How many times would you say you can't let Maryland hang around? And I feel like that's the way this first quarter has gone. Michigan's gotten the better of play, but they're only up 2 nothing. And this is a situation where you just got to peach your, you got to execute at a high level to, to get Maryland behind and then, you know, try to try to build on that. Both of these teams with five victories this season, three of Maryland's five have come after regulation time. They have been clutch in OT. Bame brings it up for John Morgan, one of the two goal scorers this afternoon. He'll invert against the short stick defensive midfielder, Nick Red. Three minutes exactly in the opening quarter. Morgan in no hurry. You hear the defensive communication. Stutter steps not fooling Red. It's Cohen's turn with it. Lockwood off the roll dodge in the pick. Maryland practiced time after time this week, knowing they'd see a lot of picks from Michigan. Shot clock's at 23. Bain looking for a passing lane. Rolling back against Red. Cohen from the top fires. That's easy pickings on the bounce shot for McNaney. McNaney with a clean save. He gave up a couple of rebounds and turned into goals for Virginia last year. He looks on top of his game so far. On the sidelines, the Terps again having issues clearing through midfield. McNaney, who made 10 stops against Virginia in the loss last week. Five turnovers for Maryland in the game's first 13 minutes. I mean, not, not good at math, Joe, but five <laughs> times four equates to 20. They had 18 last weekend. They're really going to have to clean that up. This is not be the best lacrosse. On the go, Ronda runs into the double. Burleigh's timed that perfectly with Stamos. Off the ground and running, it's Jack McDonald. Looking for fast break numbers. Molliver, no break. Molliver, shoved below goal line, extended there by Cajal Roberts. Another transfer from Ivy League Princeton. Earlier, you mentioned Ronda trying to have more of an impact. I think he's forcing things. The force feed into BAME, that time he runs into a double team. You just got to... You got to take it back. Take it back a notch. Relax. Take a deep breath. Long game. A lot of lacrosse. Spanos into the alley. Given a bump there. There's the first flag on the day. Grant McCurry was close by as Maryland goes to extra man. Looks like it's going to be a hold as Spanos. Looks like they got their feet tangled, but anytime you take away that advantage of the offensive player, and it even looks like it's a hold, a push from behind, this crowd doesn't like it. Michigan, Michigan lacrosse is here. The fans are after the refs. The team is after the refs, but at the end of the day, a call that you can definitely sell that he took advantage away illegally. See the numbers top of the screen with regard to Maryland's man up effectiveness. They were one for three against Virginia last week offensive coordinator is a maryland grad in michael phipps beautiful execution there on the put away daniel maltz goals in all eight games this season this will get maryland going off the jump i'm not sh quite sure what michigan was trying to do in the man down situation number 89 in white bo Pedersen, looked like he was going to shut off daniel maltz but then he lets him go. You can see 89 lets him go. 
and doesn't communicate or no one recognizes 37 just slipping in between really four white jerseys to dunk at home. Chorus with the assist and back to the face off X we go. Good wing play, good scoop of the ground ball by Andrew Stanzel, a transfer from Bucknell, former captain of the Bison. We're in the final minute of the opening quarter. It's 2-1 Michigan. We felt getting the better of Weirman at the faceoff dot, but Weirman, his DNA, he gets better as the game goes on, but for right now, Michigan getting the lion's share of faceoffs. Taylor in trouble there, some 50 yards from the cage. Ball down, Burlace has it in his pocket. He'll scoop to Kohler. Eric Kohler lost possession. 20 seconds remaining, a scrambly end to this opening first quarter of play. Did we say it was the second season? Plays are important, emotions are high. The middle of the field really being contested by these two talented ball clubs. Michigan wants to settle things down, calls timeout. They'll try to draw something up before the close of the first quarter. Michigan squad entering play at five and three. All of their losses have come to ranked teams and they're squaring off with number eight ranked Maryland today. A team they've only beaten twice in their program history since 2012 and those two wins came a season ago and during the regular season Michigan ran away with it on the road and then you you take a step back and you say okay Maryland just had a bad day that day let's see what happens round two well Michigan did even better winning 14-5 in the Big Ten championship game so and then it's like, okay, well, maybe the teams just didn't match up that well. I tell you, this Michigan program, they've recruited well, they've coached well, they've developed well. This is a bona fide force on the landscape of college across. Maryland, meanwhile, when you take a look at the Terrapins, they're always going to be compared to that 2022 national championship team. One of the best teams of all time, undefeated, raised the trophy. But this Maryland team, they do have some, some issues. They do have some holes that they have to fill. And it's a work in progress, as John Tillman told us this week, looking for more consistency and better execution. The graphic showed you they've never suffered a setback in Ann Arbor. They've won their four visits here. Coach Tillman taking the guys into the classroom during that timeout. When we return to play, 14.5 seconds to go. Michigan with the ball. This is a Wolverine squad that has never won its Big Ten season opener. They are 0-8 in that regard. They're yeah, looking to make some history in another way here today. They're, they're getting the better of play. They're winning face-offs. They're getting good goaltending. The turnovers and the sloppy play on both of these teams over the last four or five minutes, really the, the bugaboo for each. Christian Ronda will get downhill against Nick Red. Sweeping from the top, times at five seconds in the quarter. Feed it inside, that goes over the head of Schaller. It'll be Maryland ball with 3.3 to go. Will Schaller, sophomore, launching at the full length of the field as time expires in the opening 15 minutes. You just feel like Michigan got the better of play, but if you're Maryland, you feel really good that you're going into the end of the first quarter only down by a goal. 2-1, low scoring today in Ann Arbor, Michigan, under the sunshine. We'll have you back in a moment. Spreading the field now, wide open and tight. Score! Could be icing on the cake. First time here, first time successful. It'll be hail to the victors in Ann Arbor. Mark a season to go. Spectacular finish to the Big Ten tournament for Kevin Connery's squad. We'll be celebrating 10 years of Big Ten lacrosse. It's an anniversary to celebrate, but when you think back to that particular day at Homewood Field, I'm not sure if the Wolverines could have been any better. No, and, and really, they couldn't have been any better over the three days of that tournament. Number four seed had to win a play-in game. Then they knock off the number one seed, Penn State, who went on to the national semifinals. And then they take on Maryland and run them off the Homewood Field. What a day for Michigan lacrosse. They are here. They're one of the better programs in the country and they lead 2-1 after one quarter here against the Terps. Big Ten Conference play opening up today on Big Ten Network. Two games tomorrow for you. Johns Hopkins at Rutgers. Mark, I know you'll be there. Penn State and Ohio State will also clash on Big Ten Network during the day. It's here. The Big Ten season is here. Five weeks of gauntlet lacrosse. 
seasons can be turned around and looking forward to it. Tiernan with it, he's had three different five goal games this season. 44 in the white, he started the scoring for the Wolverines today. Morgan has the lead goal, Maltz on extra man for Maryland if you're just catching up with us this Saturday afternoon from Ann Arbor. Lockwood sets and fires, missed it there over top of the cage. Lockwood who had five turnovers in the loss to Notre Dame. An exquisite setup man. This is a guy who five times this season has had three or more assists. Yeah, missed a game against Harvard due to injury and then the sloppy return against Notre Dame. Looking to return to form here today. Kevin Connery expects him to have a big afternoon. One minute down in the second quarter, Cohen, who plays a lot of attack and a lot of midfield out of the box, swings it back for Bain, who's got Kohler the short stick on him. Bain flicks its scores! An outstanding individual effort. This possession started with a face-off win from Jackie Weller, who's a freshman. So Michigan is incorporating a two-headed monster, combining Wheatfelt with Weller and Mikey Bame. We talk about all the picks that Michigan sets. That's a matchup that had offensive coordinator Scott Beda licking his chops, just a strong dodge to his right hand, slots it over top McNaney's head. Michigan pumps their lead up to two. Bame's 19th. Two goals away from passing Josh Zulana for number one all time at Michigan. Weirman wins the draw, irks his bid, rattles around off the headgear of Case Van Wees. Maryland maintains possession. 3-1 for Michigan, equaling its largest lead on the day. Subs coming off the sideline for Maryland in red. Molliver brings it to the cage, skip it through. Glanced off of Syracuse. It was backed up well, though, by Irksa. Points in 22 of his 23 career games. Spanos and Alley Dodge, not much room given. Molliver against Clay. Rowan Clay, brother Bryce, former captain here. Spanos turns and scores. Maryland incorporating their own variety of pick game. A couple of these picks look like traffic jams. One from the left side, and bodies were colliding. Watch this one, Weirman, great pick. And it just frees Spanos up to get inside of the defense and stick it. What an incredible pick. Set, Michigan defenders collide. No one's on the backside. Spanos walks in and sticks it. Andrew Stanzel felt the sting of that pick from Weirman, and Spanos converts. Tallies in seven of his eight games this season. Weirman on the draw, possession for Wheatfeld. Comes out of there with a face-off win. 72% in his last four games for Wheatfeld. Weirman breaks his stick on that last face-off. And the Maryland coach is looking for something, a little something, something behind the play where he got the stick broken, but no dice. We'll see how that affects Weirman in his approach to the, to the dot. Hope it's not his favorite. I, it, I'm, it's, it looks like the head's okay, so just a different shaft, but still on game day, you like to, you like to have the old regular. Absolutely, especially if you're superstitious. <laughs> Canfield peeking out on Tiernan, Tiernan the crease guy. It's Mulholland working from back behind the cage. Turned aside by Sharkey, off the swim move. Here comes the double. They get it coordinated for a pass inside. Bain whiffed on it. Ball down. They continue to dig, and McNaney will get it back into his crease. Another pile up on State Street. Michigan, that's the third time they've tried to get it inside to Bain. I thought that was their best look, but Bain just drops it. So obviously, the Michigan offense, they see something in the off-ball defense and allows them to feel like they can jam it inside. Erksa, a season ago, the Big Ten freshman of the year, playing catch with Owen Murphy. Getting Jack Brennan involved now in that second midfield unit, running against McCurry. Almost four minutes into the second quarter, it's a 3-2 advantage for Michigan. Both teams on the board in the second frame. Circle it up for Irksman. 
Trying to get away from the top cover guy there, Jack Whitney. Arcs around a pick from Kelly. Shot clock at 30. Murphy with the good acceleration. More defensive communication. Bulldozing in against Billig, a shot that rattles off the iron. Coming up with a scoop. First time there, the ground ball for Daniel Kelly. Another possession for Maryland. Great hustle by Kelly. Took the shot that was fought away, and then he gets the ground ball to extend the possession for this Maryland team. Hall Roberts with a can opener check there. Almost got it away from Jack Brennan. Molliver off the roll dodge. Fires. He scores! Eric Molliver. This is a great sign for Terrapin Nation. The second midfield, John Tillman, Mike Phipps, they have been trying to squeeze more and more out of them. Look at the save from Taylor. Then Kelly's going to extend the possession by picking up the ground ball. Look at the hustle from one side of the cage to the other. Keeps the possession alive for the Terps. And then Mulliver, just a spin move, steps away from pressure. I don't think Taylor thought that shot was coming near side over his non-stick shoulder. Great individual effort by Mulliver. Mulliver with tallies in six of the eight games, picks up his 10th on the season. As they continue to wage battle there at the face-off dot, there's a push call. It's gonna give the Terps possession. Luke Weirman, number one all-time at Maryland. That's a storied tradition. Number one all-time face-off wins. Spanos kicks it for Stamos. In a 3-3 game. Maryland's starting to get comfortable, Joe. That, that ground ball by Kelly really energized them. They score the goal. This is a big defensive stand for the Wolverines. 44 in the red is Elijah Stovall, freshman with Irksa. The sophomore, Pedersen, an extremely physical short stick defensive midfielder, 89 in the white. Herxa rolls back, kicked out of there again. Taylor with another save. Huge rebound, Stoball, keep it hot. Herxa scores! A sidewinding bouncer that gives Maryland its first lead on the day. First one's free, second one's gonna cost you. It's March Madness. Look at Irksa, turn, shoot, watch. Stowball boxes his man out, turns away, offensive rebound, gets it back over to Irksa, worm burner. Taylor guessed on that one. He leaned left, stepped left. Irksa, that little pump, moves him, puts it to the right of the right-handed goaltender. Taylor, great sequence. And Maryland right now, Joe, is feeling it, and they're starting to get downhill. Procedure gives Weirman another draw. Three goals unanswered for the Terps, their first lead on the day, as we near nine minutes to go in the opening half. At halftime, here in Ann Arbor, they will celebrate the 2023 Big Ten Tournament Championship squad, welcoming them back to campus on this alumni weekend. Officials giving Michigan the ball here. Looked like a moving pick called against the Terrapins behind the cage. That is a break for the Wolverines that have to try to grab old man Mo back from the Terps who've made some really, really nice plays in the ground ball department over the last few minutes. Seven goals on the board from these two squads. Seven different goal scores in a 4-3 lead for the guys in red. Depth, depth, balance, versatility. Daniel Kelly is a natural attackman playing midfield. You got Ronda who can play both. Bo Lockwood's a natural attackman playing midfield for the Michigan Wolverines. Talent all over this field. Ronda working around a screen from Aronson. Shares the rock with Ryan Cohen. Cohen, Zapatello nearby wearing that famed Maryland number one. The bounce shot from the outside is snared by McNaney. A good outlet for Zapatello and Maryland looks to go in transition but the pass is low and it slides by Molliver. That's a break for Michigan. I thought that shot by Cohen was a little hasty, a little early in the shot clock. Good on McNaney, it was a high bouncer about a foot outside the crease and it kicked up, but you could tell Michigan, they're just, they're just not executing the way they were the first five, seven minutes of this game. The handoff for John Morgan after the clear from the 
third year starter at close defense, Jack Whitney. Bame will grab onto it along the end line against Zapatello. Ajax two times an All-America defender. Long stick, close D. Bame off the pick play with Morgan. Bring it up top for Mulholland. Kohler draws a bead on him. Just past the halfway mark on the shot clock. Lockwood on the go against Schaller. Lockwood on the re-dodge, kicked away by McNaney. That was uh, heading wide of the goal. It'll stay Michigan possession, 22 seconds to shoot. Barrel is doing a great job on the picks behind the cage. Their adjustment that they're making, they see the pick coming. Defender stepping out, taking a step back and then lunging forward to keep that matchup integrity and not switch onto a shorty. The pass to the inside gets away. Beam hustles it down with eight seconds to shoot. Working in against Zapatello. Bame off the question mark dodge that's stabbed by McNaney. The outlet on the button there for Nick Alvidi. Alvidi will run, kick it from Oliver. Looking for a trailer now as the Wolverines get back in the hole defensively. It's six on six for the Terps. Alvidi, one of a handful of transfers from the University of Vermont that have come to spend their graduate years in College Park. And that was a great defensive stand by the Terps. Michigan desperately trying to free up, get that big little behind the cage. It just couldn't do it. That'll be a shock to your system going from Vermont to College Park weather-wise. A little bit. <laughs> Off and running. Whittier kicks it, and it's a sip from Murphy. That tickles the twine. Four unanswered goals for Maryland. The Terp bench, they're feeling it. They've quieted this Wolverine crowd at University of Michigan Lacrosse Stadium. Once again, some miscommunication. The slide comes from number nine in white, Roberts, and that leaves Murphy wide open. And you can see Murphy, excuse me, Roberts after the goal saying, that's on me. That was undisciplined. He created offense for the Terps, and Maryland right now is feeling it. Murphy has a handful this season. The last time he visited this stadium with Maryland back in 2023, or the 2022, that amazing offensive squad. Murphy had three on the board that afternoon. Weirman was attacked. There was a timeout called before the loss of possession, and head coach Connery is livid on the sideline for Michigan. He is not happy. Felt like the ball was dislodged before Coach Tillman got the timeout. But Maryland will have a time to draw something up. This second quarter streaking for the Terps as the head coach views for Michigan. Maryland has found itself down by two a couple of times today. At the moment, they're on the lead by two. 5-3 against Kevin Conry's squad. And this is the same Kevin Conry who used to run the Maryland defense. He won a national championship 2017, the Johns Hopkins graduate, a trusted ally, and the defensive coordinator for head coach John Tillman. He said that experience helped prepare him to be a head coach. And when this Michigan job opened up, Go Blue didn't have to look outside the conference. They had an assistant in College Park that fit the bill plenty quite of, nicely. Plenty of mutual respect for these two programs. Kevin quickly said of Maryland's current defensive coordinator, Jesse Bernhardt, one of the best he's ever seen. This pass is behind its intended target, giving Michigan the ball with five and a half minutes to work. In the opening half, if you're just tuning in, Joe Beninati, Mark Dixon with you. Lacrosse on the Big Ten Network. It was two on Michigan after 15 minutes. Maryland, though, on a four-goal run to take this two-goal advantage. Yeah, Maryland out of the timeout, looking on a set play, a little bit of rotation, some ring around the rosy, and then the pass just not connecting. I thought it was there, but the pass just didn't connect. And Michigan right now, they've, they've got to get the momentum back. Ring around the rosy, no pocket full of posy, though. No, no goal either. A turnover. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Ronda with it. 19 in the white for the Wolverines. Stalked there by Nick Red. 40 seconds to shoot, 4.45 in the half. Set it up for Ronda, who has six goals in the last two games, eight in the last three outings for Michigan. Fueling the fire for them. Cohen 
Ran out of racetrack there, turns. Gets topside and is watched carefully by McDonald, the long stick midfielder. Shot clock's at 12. Bame inside, Cohen spins and scores. That'll give Hail to the Victor something to cheer about. Look up the definition of smooth in the dictionary, and that is the pass, and look at the catch and release. All in one motion. Cohen knows he's in the heart of that Terrapin defense. The picks again, just pick after pick after pick. Behind the cage, on the wing, up top. Nice job for Cohen to shake loose. Great vision from Bame. Much needed goal for the Wolverines. Cohen, the fastest Wolverine ever to 100 career points. Has points now in 39 straight outings. It's 5-4 for Merrill. As the Terps settle in to clear. McNaney sprinting to the midline. Spots the open man. This is Zach Whittier who'll take it for a ride against Cajal Roberts. Maryland out of timeouts. John Tillman exhausted both of his and we're just under four to play. I appreciate the clarification. Keeps my bookkeeping <laughs> intact. Whittier gets topside on Roberts, feeds it on the outside here. Irks are ready to go. Against McCurry. Michigan sending the double. They want Roberts on him. Skip it, that gets away from Murphy. Ball bouncing at the mid-stripe. Goose to board there by Zapatello, a fine play. That is a tremendous play by Zapatello. Mikey Bain was right in position, wearing him out, but Zapatello gets it, but then put on Michigan. Created a ground ball situation, they come up with it. Clay gives it back to the netminder, Hunter Taylor, the 19-year-old sophomore guarding the goal for the Wolverines. Maryland has the lead by one, less than three minutes from half. Just a reminder, they'll celebrate the 2023 Big Ten Tournament champion Wolverines. We'll share that ceremony with you. For years, Michigan, the doormat, really, of Big Ten men's lacrosse. To win that championship last year, what a special moment. It'll be a great celebration at halftime here in Ann Arbor. And at the same time, Kevin Conry told us this week, you know, we've already turned the page. Absolutely. This is a new year. The Terps thought it was interesting, though, that they were going to unfurl the, the championship banner on the day when they come to town. Yeah, you guys have had, what, seven or eight games and, uh, you know, half of them at home to do that? Okay. On the go here, the jump shot sent wide by Isaac Aronson. Michigan actually had played the last four games on the road prior to today. With just over two minutes to go in the half. Listen, it, it does make sense. First Big Ten game of the season, come home. Who knew it was only going to be 30 degrees? Maybe it was going to be 33 degrees here uh, when, they, when they put the day together. But do it in front of your fans, do it in front of your faithful, and a lot of alums coming back that this program is built on their backs. Coach Tillman from Maryland said, well, maybe I guess they're trying to send us a message, but didn't put much into it. Wanted his team to remain focused. Battles from deep. Had it blocked. Ederson selling out there defensively. Stands all over, runs it. Justin Ennis comes up with the scoop. And 90 seconds to operate in this first half. Clay brings it aboard. Ederson for Tiernan. Rattles it off the crossbar and in. Justin Tiernan, second of the day, ties the score. Helter Skelter at midfield. Michigan is able to corral the ball. Give credit to Ennis. I've been really impressed with him defensively. And look at him navigate and slalom through this Maryland ride. And the best view in the house, Joe, was Kevin Conry as he was parallel to this play. Should I call timeout? Do I want to call timeout? He does not pull the trigger. He recognized the transition opportunity. Great passing down the far side of the field. Tiernan in the one-on-one -on -one, sticks it. Multi-goal games, all nine for Justin Tiernan so far this season. 75 seconds left in the half. McCurry comes up with a scoop, the ball is down. Popping into the air for the Maryland short stick defensive midfielder, George Stamos. Wow. What a great check from A.J. Larkin. 26 in red, off of the wing, dig check, gets it on the ground. Michigan looked like they were going to enjoy the last possession 
of the first half here. Now Maryland gets that luxury thanks to Larkin's handiwork. Both teams, both coaches, Conry and Tillman were telling us this week, insisting on better wing play, and we saw a good example of it there from A.J. Larkin. 40 seconds in the half, Irksa says, follow me. He'll turn. Whitney right there in his hands, off the sneak! A beautiful conversion for Jack Chorus. A potential two-goal turnaround here. I mean that because if Michigan had been able to successfully get that ball into the box, they could have called timeout. At the very worst, they're gonna have a possession. But instead, Larkin creates the turnover. First time we've seen Chorus really go behind the cage. Takes the feed from Irksa, one of the best cutting midfielders, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country. And he dusts his man from behind, takes the feed and slips it past Taylor. Front swinging to glory there for his ninth on the season. Golds in five of the last eight. 26 seconds to go, face off possession for Michigan and Justin Wheatfeld. And Kevin Conry will ask for time to, tie, to try and diagram the, the tying tally. So far, Mark, a back and forth game. Maryland seeing Michigan jump out to a couple of two goal leads, reeling them in on each occasion. And you sensed in the first quarter that that was the time that Michigan was really getting the better of play. They were winning the majority of faceoffs, and they could have distanced themselves from the Terrapins. But credit Maryland, they hung around, took a couple body blows, got their act together with some awesome ground ball play that gave them second chance possessions that both resulted in tallies. And then Michigan, they're not gonna back down. They took some of the haymakers from the Terrapins. They've reestablished themselves. They gave up that goal, but they have a chance to get it back here with just under 21 seconds remaining in the first half. Wanna let you know about next Sunday, folks. Uh, more men's lacrosse excitement coming your way. The Terps will take on the Nittany Lions in what will be, should be a top 10 showdown. Coverage beginning 7 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Mark, you and I will be there for that one. I'm sure it'll be chilly, and I'm sure it'll be a close game, hotly contested whenever those two teams butt heads. No question, Penn State, early season loss, opening weekend loss to Colgate, but they've rattled off six wins in a row. This is a Nittany Lion team loaded with talent, TJ Malone, and then you have Jack Frassian between the pipes. This is a formidable Penn State team. We'll get there next week. A Little bit of business to take care of between now and then, of course, with the Nittany Lions opening up with the Buckeyes tomorrow. The big Big Ten Network debut, Joe, of Caleb Fiak, the big tasty. The oh, goalie, the Nets. The Nets, the goalie. 300 pounds now, or? He's, I don't know. Eh? High 280s, maybe? You know, you don't ask anybody. He fills up the cage, baby. He's giving them a big spark. Big tasty. Yeah, he's giving them a shot in the arm. You've been telling me about him for years. <laughs> I can't wait to see him in person. A little different than the old Bowden blocker from back in the day. <laughs> Just a little. Holy smoke. Is he really? Oh, my gosh. He's a big boy. I remember you showing me pictures and saying, this one's going to be special. I'm like, OK. Time ticking now. 12 to go in the half. Cohen on the dead run. Throwback Mulholland gets topside on the inside roll. Kicked away by McNaney. Two seconds as the buzzer and horn sound ending the opening 30 minutes. That's a big time save for McNaney. Mulholland got some good inside position. Number 30 in red stood his ground, stood tall, fends it off and allows his team to go into the intermission up by a score. Michigan jumped out to the 2-1 advantage after the opening quarter of play this chilly afternoon in Ann Arbor. Alumni weekend with the Wolverines about to celebrate their 2023 Big Ten tournament team. Won that squad that uh, won the title at Homewood Field in Baltimore. Maryland race back. The Terps sharing the rock. Six different goal scorers to take the 6-5 advantage. Kevin Connery joining us now on the sideline. Kevin, your squad had a 3-1 advantage. What was the turning point in your estimation? No, I think they're, uh, 
you know, we got to be a little bit better with the picks right now below goal line extended. I think this is something we've been working on all week. We're just uh, a little bit too over-aggressive, chasing a little bit too far. We're going to slough it in just a little bit. Make sure we're getting down and around them and, uh, you know, uh, and, and shore some stuff up. They're doing a great job off some rebounds, too. We just got to shore up some of those ground balls. Top level, Coach, what is the message to your team here at the break? Keep going. We're going to do some really great stuff out there. We really are. Doing a lot of great stuff. I'm really proud of our guys, the way they're fighting, the way they're moving. And, uh, you know, we're just going to go out there and, and keep competing for the second half. Kevin, thanks very much for the insight. We always appreciate it. No problem. Michigan head coach Kevin Connery, whose squad a season ago, when you recap it all, it was a memorable spring for the Wolverines, a program record 10 victories on and on into an impressive tournament show. Well, and look at the road to the Big Ten Championship for them. The number four seed, they hosted their arch rival Ohio State here in Ann Arbor, knocked them off. Then they go to Baltimore. Everyone's kind of licking their chops thinking, okay, who's Penn State going to play in the championship? Maryland or Hopkins? They knock off the Nittany Lions. And then they do really the unthinkable. They dominated. Maryland in the championship game, secured their first NCAA tournament berth. There they go up to Ithaca, not an easy place to play or travel to, and they beat the Big Red in overtime. Terrific season in 23 for the Wolverines. So much fun as we turn things over now to public address announcer Keith Jason. And staff from the 2023 Big Ten tournament champions who received their championship rings prior to the game today. Please welcome back to the field, Walt Alexander, Bryce Clay, Michael Cosgrove, Andrew Darby, Dylan Gardner, Oliver Meyer, Kevin Pimentel, and Peter Thompson. Also a very special thank you to members of our student support staff who also received their rings today, Megan Bars. Kaylee Cawhorn, Eric Harilak, Kyler Conjoyan, Ryan Pilkington, Maya Piloff, Navia Singhai, and Emerson Smith. Fans, let's give it up one more time for our returning alumni and student support staff. Wolverines faithful saluting those alumni back from the 2023 Big Ten Tournament winners. A spectacular showing for Hunter Taylor. All of this with Homewood Field as the backdrop. Michigan a moment it will never forget. And now they'll try to duplicate this spring. We're halfway home this Saturday afternoon in Ann Arbor. The Terrapins and the Wolverines catching their breath after 30 minutes. Tomorrow, folks, don't miss a lacrosse doubleheader as Penn State clashes with Ohio State, followed by Rutgers against Johns Hopkins. Coverage begins at 2.30 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Stay right there with us when we return. Mark and I have a look back at a few of the key moments from the opening two quarters with Michigan entertaining Maryland. On a chilly day, I wonder how cold it is in the shade there here at the University of Michigan Lacrosse Stadium. A 6-5 advantage for Maryland after 30 minutes. Joe Beninati, Mark Dixon with you. Mark, let's start to right from the beginning in the opening quarter. Michigan out to a, a good start thanks to Justin Tierney. Wolverines feeding off of the emotions of the crowd. Big day here for Michigan. They take the 2-0 lead. Tiernan, then John Morgan take up the twine. But Maryland, as we know, Joe, they never, ever go away. No, it's a team with plenty of pop, and they shared the wealth. Spanos, at tight range, will not miss. Yeah, a second chance possession. Daniel Kelly, key ground ball. Then Stowball, Elijah Stowball, gets it, slots it to Irksa, the Big Ten freshman of the year from a year ago. Really shifted the momentum of this game, and Maryland 
piece together a nice scoring run that had Michigan back on their heels. Oh, and Murphy on the board as well for the Terps, who have the 6-5 advantage. After 30 minutes, anything jump out at you from the first half stats? The face-offs, uh, Michigan getting the better of it. They've used both Justin Wheatfelt and Jackie Weller against the Ironman Luke Weirman. We'll see how that plays out here in the second half. The turnover battle, too, both on pace for around that 20 turnover mark. And it's something that they're probably going to have to clean up here if they want to walk away with the win. As we begin Big Ten Conference action, Logan McNaney getting back to his gold crease, getting set for the start of quarter number three. We'll share it with you in just a few moments on Big Ten Network. Maryland Terrapin faithful in the stands here at University of Michigan Lacrosse Stadium. It is brisk. Temperatures in the upper 30s. The Terps, though, heating up the action in that second quarter, outscoring Michigan 5-3 to take the 6-5 lead. As we remind you, tomorrow you can catch women's lacrosse when the second-ranked Terrapins of Maryland tangle with the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Coverage beginning tomorrow, noon Eastern, only on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. So it is lacrosse wall to wall for you faithful tomorrow on Big Ten Network as both teams are getting back to the playing surface here. Soon to begin the third quarter, Maryland and Michigan. Maryland head coach John Tillman is with us for some thoughts from the sideline. Coach, what was the best part of your offensive game in the first 30 minutes? Uh, just, I think the biggest thing we got to do is settle down. Uh, just a lot of turnovers. I think we had nine turnovers at the half. and uh, Just tough to, to have that many turnovers to, to really get into a rhythm and, and put some pressure on the defense. So, But I thought after like the first five minutes, I, I thought we had some good looks early. Uh, we didn't capitalize on them. Uh, and then guys just kept scrapping, and I'm proud of them for that. They bounced back, and, and, and obviously Mike Smith's done a good job with the offense. Defensively, Coach, what are you most pleased with? Um, you know, I think all in all, guys are doing a pretty good job of understanding what we're trying to do. Um, they got great players, uh, like always. Um, I think you guys have a good sense of what we're trying to do. Uh, knowing hands, knowing personnel, and knowing some of their looks and communicating pretty well. And, and Logan's doing a nice job in the, in, uh, in the goal. Coach, we appreciate the input. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Maryland head coach John Tillman sending Ajax Zapatello back to the field. As we get set to start the second half, Coach Tillman, Mark, he said last week he loved the way his team competed in that game, that losing effort against Virginia. Yeah, you know you're always going to get Maryland's best effort. And the answer that he gave to how, you know, what, what you like most about your defense, the preparation and how the kids execute the scout. Weirman comes up with the first face off of the second half. Luke averaging around 11 ground balls per game. Fumbled it though out of the head of his cross and it's Michigan ball to start quarter three. Yeah, remember he broke his stick at, you know, earlier in the game. I don't know if the feel, it was the shaft that broke. I don't know if the feel's different, but that is an uncharacteristic hiccup from number 52 in red. Jack Whitney brings it across for Michigan in the white. Tiernan, 44 for the Wolverines. A couple of first half goals. The first and last for Michigan of the opening 30 minutes. Cohen with perhaps the prettiest goal of the first half. 40 in the white. A spinning, whirling dervish left-handed delivery that beat Logan McNaney. Former NCAA tournament most outstanding player for the Terps in 2022. Ronda on the go. Shaded on the outside by Red. 80 second shot clock down to 25. McNaney gets that one, steers it away. It'll stay Michigan ball. Lockwood was there ahead of Schaller. Closest to the ball, where and when it leaves the field on a shot for possession. McNaney seeing it, nice stick save. Gotta be honest with you, Joe, the referee and me thought Red was a little closer where and when it went out, but Michigan see if they can take advantage. Cohen off the swim, put it off the outside of the post. It'll be raked into the cross of Logan McNaney. McNaney who missed 14 games a season ago with injury. Back from his knee injury, coaches were telling us, you were talking about it, really wasn't clear till springtime. Seems to be getting stronger and more confident. 
with each and every game. He looks good outside the cage. That was the last piece for him to be cleared. And that's where Brian Ruppel, the freshman a year ago, that's where he excelled was outside the cage. And the only, the, the plan is to redshirt Brian Ruppel in all likelihood, but late in game, if it's a key situation and any pressure outside the cage, you might see 14 in red out there for the Terps. Wes Schmidt is listed as the backup, the understudy to McNaney. Hunter Taylor from Michigan backed up by Shane Carr. Taylor unseated Carr for the number one duties a season ago. Chorus on the inside. Clay comes over to make the strip. The 19-year-old freshman from Grand Rapids. Yeah, they just put Chorus in a very uncomfortable situation. He's a lefty coming around the cage with his off weak hand, and he just ran out of real estate. Stanzel moves it down the flank for Tiernan, and then they'll get it to the uh, setup man, Bo Lockwood. Tons of assists. He's had a five assist game against Canisius, a four assist game against Marquette this season already. We're seeing some mixing and matching from offensive coordinator Scott Bita. Lockwood playing attack now. Looks like they've moved Ryan Cohen into the midfield. Circle it up. Mulholland with Stamos and then Schaller in the vicinity for Maryland. 30 seconds still to shoot as we're looking for the first strike of the second half. 6-5 for the Terps in red. Bame throwing back. Lockwood against Sharkey. Skip it on through. Tiernan just missed. Great offense. That was a sweet look to the backside. Tiernan looks like he short-armed that a little bit. Probably wishes he could have that one back. Number one goal scorer for Michigan to this point and has been number one in the nation at times this season. Bain with three seconds to shoot. Morgan fidgets back behind the goal. It's a shot clock violation against the Wolverines. Yeah, I don't think Morgan recognized the time. One, because he didn't go to the cage urgently, but he also didn't chuck it into the corner. Got to have better clock awareness communication if you're the Michigan offense. That's Mark Dixon. I'm Joe Beninati. Shout out a thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew, both here in Ann Arbor and back in our studios in Chicago. Just passing the four minute mark of the third quarter and still waiting for that first tally of quarter number three. Perhaps it'll come from Zach Whittier, who scored earlier this season against Loyola. Coaches are hoping for some added productivity from this junior. Whittier sprinting. Matched up on the outside with Grant McCurry, one of the short stick defensive midfielders. They call them the, the bricklayers here in Ann Arbor. Foundational type players. Irksa on the turn. Whittier, 20 seconds to shoot. To the alley. Below goal line extended. Molliver will have the ball in his cross a lot this second half. Kept at sticks length by Clay. A tough road to the net for Daniel Kelly. He crossed over, he folded that over and sent it wide. Maltz digging for it. This is a shot clock violation against Maryland. Second possession in a row. They've taken a lefty. First was Chorus. Now it's Kelly made him a righty and created, in essence, a turnover. Good team defense by the Michigan Wolverines. Ronda helping out in the clearing game. Wolverines dressed in white, trailing by one on home turf. Michigan squad at five and three. A season ago, they were 10 and seven overall, a, a program record. 23 wins, just recognized many of the alums back on this alumni weekend from that Big Ten tournament championship squad. So many of those guys are still out on the field today. Closing, Aronson, bouncer, missed it top side on McNaney. Nifty little, almost give and go right there. The pick, even though it was an exchange with the ball, it was an exchange after Bame drew two, got it back to Aronson just off the mark. Michigan's had two clean quality looks on cage, just got to put it on the six by six. Ronda with goals in six of his first eight. Pawns it off for Cohen. Marked by Schaller. Cohen so tough to cover. Good stop there and a step out by McNaney. Ground ball comes up for McDonald. Scooping it there, Kohler with a the help from McNaney. The Terps have an angle to clear now. This is as healthy as McNaney has looked all season long. Even relative to a week ago, the step out with that. 
and 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 to cut the angle down. Beautiful. What makes you say that? The power, the explosion. The the he doesn't look hesitant. So he threw an outlet pass that was underthrown by a good seven or eight yards last weekend. That's Lo not Logan McNaney. Watch him explode off of the line. Steps up, explosion. Gets the hands out, fights it off. That is excellent goaltending and a good sign for Terrapin Nation. John Tillman has said they've been working on it. Technique, fundamentals, the step, not overstepping. McNaney seems like he is finding his form each and every week. It's trust, trust your body, and it's hard to trust when you've suffered an injury of that nature, but he is trusting and, and it's paying off. Back from the significant knee injury, Bame comes to get it, marked by the short stick, Nick Red. Bame will send that pass. It's too short for Lockwood. Down in the dirt and a turnover against Michigan. Good defense by Maryland. McNaney with that great save, and then they come back and create a turnover. Kind of busy, what, kind of a, a little bit of a ding-dong uh, third quarter here so far. Some quality chances from, from Michigan, much better than Maryland. Their Maryland offensive execution the last two trips down has severely been lacking. We'll see what adjustments they can make. Defenders ruling, no scoring, exactly now at the half mark of the third quarter. Molliver will attempt to change that. Spanos has inverted. Good matchup here against the physical Bo Pedersen. That pass down low, Erksa gets away. He'll sprint to the midline, keep it alive for Maryland. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Chorus against Pedersen. Swings the cage. On around for Spanos, guarded by Cajal Roberts. Spanos bulldozing his way to the interior. The pass, Erksa took his eyes off of it. Man ball on the sideline comes up Michigan, and it's Roberts on the clear. Joe B with the fundamentals. Great communication between Clay and Whitney on that man ball situation. Bame around the screen that was set by Roberts. Six on six here, Mulholland fires, he scores! Aiden Mulholland. It's a slow break. And again, credit the ground ball work of the Michigan Wolverines. Irksa can't handle the second consecutive bad pass. And look at Bain. Zapatello giving him just a little bit too much time to survey. Gets it to Mulholland, 27 in white, who delivers an overhand dart. Bullseye past Logan McNaney. They say, at least in the resume, in the bio, that he plays piano and violin. Showing off some pretty good hands there, Aiden Mulholland on the lacrosse field, tying things up at six. 6.20 with which to work in the third quarter. Maryland will attempt to answer now. Weirman getting them the ball. Think about piano, Joe. Are we, are we talking like classical or are we talking like Billy Joel? Yeah, sure. What, what, kind, of, what kind of groove is Mulholland? What kind of funk does he have in his bag? Either that or he just put it on his bio like he played when he was six years old. That's right. Got to catch up with him and see if he's current. <laughs> Whittier on the move. A split dodge against McCurry. Carson Billig is there to defend with a short stick. Whittier trying to draw two. Murphy on this second midfield. Popping out with possession, it's Maltz who's an inside finisher. Maltz looking over the top, great one-handed catch by Murphy. Shot clocks at 20. Irksa on the go. It was against Brown that Irksa, the sophomore, carried Maryland, perhaps single-handedly, to that overtime win. Scored eight points in the game. In the process here, on the re-dodge, he scores! Irksa. Big goal for Maryland. Only four ticks left on the shot clock. Patience by Braden Irksa. I feel like the short stick defense of Michigan got lost on this one. Steps up field, Irksa goes right underneath, delivers the shot. That is a huge goal for the Terrapins.
Lacrosse on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Michigan Lacrosse faithful here in Ann Arbor. The Maize and Blue will play three of their five Big Ten regular season games on the road. They're enjoying some home cooking today against Maryland. Big Ten Conference opener for these two squads, and it has been a nip and tuck one goal game for most of this afternoon. Temperatures in the upper 30s, sun drenched, but chilly. 7-6 Maryland in the red on the lead. Wheatfeld gets the face-off win from Weirman. Well, and this is something Michigan has that other teams don't in a tight ball game like this. Maryland just can't own the face-off dot. Wheatfeld and Jackie Weller's had success today as well. Pedersen hitches and scores! Pedersen with a six foot four hammer drills this home. He wins the substitution game, the little cat and mouse. Am I going off the field? Am I staying? He decides to stay. Look at the short stick defensive midfielder with a little stutter step around George Stamos. Great footwork. Gets his hands free, staring down Logan McNaney, and he puts a BB past the Maryland netminder. His first tally as a Wolverine had an assist against Delaware. Where's that number 89 to honor his dad, Chip, who was a tight end and quarterback football player in Ann Arbor with the Wolverines back in the mid to late 70s? It is Pedersen who's made it a seven all count. On the ensuing faceoff, a procedure call against Michigan, so possession back over to Maryland. This is, it's an interesting game, Joe. Both teams have gotten downhill on the other. Both have adjusted, taken the shots. Maryland, unimpressive team offense here in the third quarter, but that individual effort by Irksa, the saving grace as we're tied at seven. Irksa wheeling in against Whitney. Collisions, picks throughout the day. Chorus makes this move for Syracusa, hiding back behind the goal. Chorus getting worn out. He took a shot when he set that pick. Then he was hit after releasing that shot. Michigan physical on the defensive end in the 6-1-6. Spanos twirls it behind for Molliver. He'll dig in against Pedersen, who shrugs him oh. down to the turf and up into the air goes a flag. Extra man time for Maryland. This is big boy lacrosse. Pedersen just throws Molliver, who is no easy out to the turf, earns a hold call, much to the dismay of this Michigan Wolverine crowd. I, whew, that's, a, that's a tough one. That was just big boy lacrosse getting leverage and pushing Molliver to the turf, but nonetheless, 30-second man advantage for the Terps. The body language of head coach Kevin Connery there telling you that he is not much of a believer in that call as well. Showing off that Pedersen is uh, at six foot four, taller and with more leverage. It's a tough call, tough call for sure. Terps had an earlier extra man goal from Maltz. Watch out for him on the interior. As they change the formation, Murphy working at the top with Irksen. Kelly. Quickly, chorus, skip it. Murphy fires at Sizzler, went wide of the goal. That had some juice on it. Owen Murphy, the transfer from back in the day when he was a Johns Hopkins Blue Jay. He's always had that shot. He's at the top of the formation. Irksa, spin it quickly. Jump shot, chorus, knocked down and stopped there by Hunter Taylor. Great job by Taylor, not only to save it, but to recognize where the ball was. A lot of times when that thing ends up at the feet of goaltenders, they panic and they end up kicking it into the cage. Taylor did a great job of spreading his feet, looked down, identified where the ball was, and got it out of harm's way. Quickly, we've rolled through 12 minutes in this third quarter. Mulholland and Pedersen sandwiching goals around a strike from Irksa. Off the swim, Mulholland rolls back, fires, he scores! Aiden Mulholland is feeling it this afternoon. We mentioned a few minutes ago that Michigan now running Ryan Cohen, number 40 in white, out of the box as a midfielder. 
He had a short stick matchup. So I'm saying to myself, Mulholland, get it to number 40. Look at the save first, though. Great save, good recognition, locate the ball, clamp it, get it out of harm's way. Look at Mulholland. Uses the leverage and the force of Nick Red to get him away from his body. The rollback, the shot, the goal. Aiden Mulholland playing some big boy Wolverine lacrosse at this moment. Procedure on Weirman on the ensuing faceoff. Mulholland, four different two goal games. You see, he has 11 tallies this season. Four different two goal games. Hobart, Marquette, Delaware, and now Maryland giving Michigan the lead back for the third time today. I like the strategy of taking these Maryland shorties. This is a group that has been hurt by some injuries this year. And Dante Trader, arguably their number one from a year ago, didn't return to lacrosse as he is staying full-time football, looking to career, uh, pursue a career potentially in the NFL. So this, this is the area where you want to attack Maryland. Cohen off the swim, sends it back behind the cage. Mulholland inverted against Kohler. Mulholland will try it again. Kohler's twin brothers at Delaware. Mulholland will pitch. Lockwood's next. Around for Cohen. Gets away from Zapatello and short on that one wide of the goal. Both players selling out for it. Tiernan's dive closest to the ball where and when it left the field gets possession for Michigan and 21 seconds to shoot. Almost a replica of the play a few minutes ago where again I thought Schaller was closer but the refs are being consistent with that sideline call. Lockwood sprinting. Pitch it inside, Tiernan hit the crossbar. And it's a crease violation against Michigan. Wow. Goalkeeper's best friend, that six, on, six by six, the iron. Look at Tiernan, gets a step. The shot just rings off the crossbar and he lands in the crease. Tiernan, multi-goals, all nine that he's played this season. As Schaller picks up Chorus. Jack Chorus maneuvers in for Maryland. Spanos and then Kohler unguarded, feed it inside, it's quick stick wide by Chorus. Really nice recognition by number three in white, Rowan Clay. He saw what we, what Eric Kohler saw, great slot pass, but Clay steps up field and just applies the pressure to his hips to take Chorus off balance. Clay, former captain at Culver Military Academy, another crossbar in tight. Chorus ricochets back and gets it. Syracuse with a fresh 60 on the shot clock. The reset. Syracuse gets around Clay. Erksa sweeping from the top. Measured on the outside by Whitney. Cross crease delivery, Molliver did not convert there. The ricochet to the end line, Syracuse. And Molliver come up with a spinning ground ball trapped in the corner. Syracuse flicks this on and Maryland maintains possession with Maltz. Credit Molliver with a tough ground ball, but his, his shooting today, Joe, that one just went, it's a whip in the stick or something is going on with that cross. Spanos muscles his way into the alley from the bad angle, Taylor, able to get a leg on that. They're jumping on the sideline for Michigan, another save for the Wolverine keeper. He launches this one on the dead run there at the end of the third quarter. No room for Roberts. It's 8-7 Michigan with 15 minutes to go. Big 10 conference play unfolding. Chorus, heavy metal. Not the type you want to hear if you're Maryland. With the Terps in this one goal battle. Running into the net binding of Hunter Taylor. Today's State of Success is brought to you by State Farm. See how Maryland opened this 2024 season with four ranked victories. This Terp team doesn't hide from anyone. All four wins against ranked opponents, getting out to that 4-0 start. You talk about the recovery of McNaney. He was needed against Richmond overtime. Then they beat Loyola. Syracuse, a classic in the JMA Wireless Dome. Then they throttle Princeton at home. Just a little stumble against Notre Dame and Virginia and the two ACC foes. But Joe, this is twofold. One, it prepares you for conference play. And two, it gives you the metrics needed 
if you don't win the conference, it gives you the strength of schedule, RPI, quality wins, all those head-to-head -head competition things that the NCAA Selection Committee looks at for entry into the Big Dance. A Terrapin program that has won at least a share of the Big Ten title, six of eight seasons heading into play this time around. Weirman starts the fourth quarter with another face-off win as he's hatcheted there all the way down the sideline. Jackie Weller, the freshman from Potomac, Maryland, squaring off on that face-off. He's been spelling Wheatfelt from time to time. Syracuse it jogs in off the sideline. Terps get the first possession in the fourth. Erksa, so graceful with those spins and roll dodges. It's almost like he's gliding, right, Joe? Beautiful, I mean, beautiful to watch. Incredible footwork. And John Tillman will tell you that his shooting is better this season. Number 10, Braden Erksa, that his range has improved. Got the ball on his cross now. Slips past the defender, comes back question mark on Whitney. Didn't give it to him. Again, the front swinging chorus there. That worked earlier at this end of the field. Not that time, however. Ryan Syracuse, gold in all seven prior to today, has yet to strike for Maryland. Syracuse around the pick set by Erksa. Saw a double team there for a split second. Spanos long strides, kick it to Molliver with Clay attached to him. Chorus, that sidewinder is wide of the cage. Backed up by Spanos, 25 seconds to shoot for Maryland. Great communication by Ennis inside as he got switched off. He put the pole back on Erksa so he didn't get that shorty matchup. Spanos doesn't want to hang that stick against Roberts. Roberts ties him up, flings him down into the dirt, and Michigan has the ball. A little long John on South Street here, on State Street here in, in Ann Arbor. They call the hold, but they don't call the, the whip down. Nice defense by Roberts showing off his strength. Spanos, he's not a tiny boy. Listed at 6'5", 225. Wolverines with possession now. Ronda driving in against McDonald. Bame will help, as will Ryan Cohen. Both of those guys on the board as usual today for Michigan. And that substitution game, Joe, running number 40 and White Cohen out of the box, getting a shorty matchup. Tiernan, a long way from the cage. He does his best work on the inside. 20 seconds to shoot for Bame. Electrifying attackman. Skips into the alley. Hedging out there, thinking about a double was Jackson Canfield, a close defender for the Terps. Cohen off the swim. Ran right into McDonald. McDonald makes the takeaway. Jack McDonald on the run. Four on three in the fast break. McDonald feeds. Erksa took his eyes off it. Missed the catch there and out of the goal. It's Hunter Taylor racing away with a turnover. Wow, what an incredible play by McDonald. An incredibly well-timed slide. Then he picks the pass off in mid-air. Irksa just can't handle on the other end. And then number 46 in white, Mason Whitney. Incredible ground ball work. We are seeing some real artistry, some real craftsmanship with two guys with 70 inches of titanium. Mason Whitney, the brother of Jack. Third, I want to say, third different brother combo. Same season for the Wolverines in their program's history, which began in 2012. Three and a half minutes into the fourth, 8-7 Michigan. Mulholland watching Aronson, the captain, work. In concert with Bame. Ooh, Kohler threw a shoulder at him. Good aggressive defense by Kohler. Still strong on the outside. Help comes from Zapatello. Lockwood looks to the inside. There's Tiernan. No mistake. Intentional or not, this is the Wolverines overloading one side of the field where all the action is taking place, and it draws the eyes of the defense. And it looks like Kohler was on a switch after that good one-on-one -on -one defense was caught in no man's land 
two guys gravitated to another white jersey. None gravitated toward number 44 in white. He steps into the open slot, takes the feed, well, and they're doing some on. body surfing on the sideline. Ride the wave. Wolverines. Ride the wave. It looks like you at the Billy Joel concert. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, Justin Tiernan, however, points at 21 straight. That's eight hat tricks this season for Tiernan. The grad transfer from Lehigh. Terps with an opportunity here. Score! A.J. Larkin. What an answer from the Maryland Terrapins. The pole goal providing the juice. The red shirt freshman after some physical play at the midfield steps up and just rears back and delivers an overhand bouncer. That is a gigantic marker for this Maryland Terrapin team. The first person out there to greet him, number 51, Jack McDonald, the starting long stick midfielder for the Maryland seven Terrapins. Seven players, seven players on the defensive side of the ball this season, Mark, have scored points for Maryland. Larkin the latest with his first tally. It is a 9-8 lead. Michigan has had a two goal advantage three separate times today. Maryland trimming it back to one with still plenty of time to go Maryland in the fourth. I love the face-off win by Michigan only ensuing face-off. That pole goal was the equivalent, we're in March Madness, of getting dunked on. And that's the momentum shift. Now Michigan can take some air out of that Maryland balloon and get back to work in their half of the field. A Wolverine squad that's lost its last three meetings against teams ranked in the top 10. This is a top 20 matchup. Maryland sitting at eighth. Michigan ranked 20th. Tiernan off of his three goal performance. Being short sticked again, going to the cage. McNaney slams a door. Incredible save. It's red stick on stick, highway robbery here at University of Maryland Lacrosse Stadium. What an answer from Logan McNaney. McNaney so often back in the national championship season in double figure saves. He did it 11 times in 2022. The big stuff there, giving the Maryland offense a chance to tie the game. Irksa against Whitney. Jack Whitney, number 14. Kelly coming late. Daniel Kelly, nine different two goal games in his career. Points in four of his last seven. Yet to strike so far today, 45 in the red. Elijah Stobaugh, the freshman, spot duty for him in the opening half. Murphy, keep the ball hot. Kelly shares for Stobaugh. Worked over on the outside by Case Van Wees. Shot clock's at 10. Erksa stumbles, collects himself, and fires from down under. He missed it high. Got a step. Crafty pick by Daniel Kelly, 45 and red. 10, Michigan defend with short time. Remember, they gave up a goal in the first half with only four seconds left on the shot clock. This time it's five. The feed to the inside. Maltz with a catch. Oh, my goodness. A spectacular quick stick score for Maltz. The spot feed from Eric Mulliver. His stick worked just fine on that feed. Thank you very much. This is incredible. The one thing you cannot have happen as a defense is someone catching the ball in the interior. Look at the shoelace grab. And then the twirl and wrist strength. Worm burner straight through. A big, gigantic goal for the Terrapins. Maltz and Irks are the two goal scorers today for Maryland in a 9-9 game. Tally number 17 on the season for Daniel. Multi-goal games in six of eight. Brother Dylan played attack with the national champion Terps back in 2017. And it was interesting, Joe, on that sequence, Maltz earned a short stick, but he's not a Dodger. And you want to defend him with a long pole. You don't want him on the interior with a shorty. They got the matchup back, and he still is able to do that. What a feed, what a shot. That's Mark Dixon. I'm Joe Beninati. Eight minutes to go in regulation of a 9-9 game. Lacrosse on the Big Ten Network. So glad you've tuned in this chilly afternoon with us in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Big Ten Conference opener for both of these squads today.
doubleheader action coming tomorrow on Big Ten Network. Hopkins and Rutgers, Penn State and Ohio State for you before this weekend is through. Bame on the move against Stamos. Straightens him up. Bame, no shooting room there. Exactly halfway through the fourth. Bame drawing the double. Floated inside Tiernan, and that was a tough catch. Taken off the turf by Alviti for Maryland. Yeah, Bame liked the matchup. Redodged and dodged three times, and then just throws it into Tiernan. It's just not there on the interior when Maryland has any type of red jersey in that vicinity. Clearing efforts for the Terps, spot on as they pick up Jack Chorus. Heading towards the offensive third of the field. Spanos will jump in there. Syracusa will be rounding out the midfield unit in just a few moments, and there he is. How about the three highlight reel plays by Maryland? The Larkin goal, the McNaney save, and then the Maltz shot clock buzzer beater. Incredible. Have to have it if you're gonna win in conference play. Molliver, quick stick to the inside. Maltz has the hat trick. Hunter Taylor trying to organize his Wolverine defense. It's a three goal run by the Terps. The interior defense of Michigan has been solid all game long, but there Maltz just gets lost in the wash. He crashes near pipe. The recognition from Mulliver, a dime into the stick of number 37, who just redirects it into the Michigan net. Held to a single goal by Virginia last week. The hat trick now for Maltz, 18 career hat tricks for Daniel. Maryland by one with six and a half to go. The Terps have the lead for the fourth time today. Zapatello throwing checks at Bain. Those two have been at each other's throats most of the afternoon. It has been a fun matchup to watch. It's no wonder why any team playing against Maryland, let alone Michigan, wants to switch that matchup. Zapatello is so good as a cover guy, but John Timmel will tell you, the defensive coaches at Maryland will tell you, Zapatello doesn't hurt you in any regard. Off the ground, off ball, he has it all. He really is a total package. Disciplined, smart and plays within himself. And that means he doesn't try to do too much. This bid from Ronda sails high. It was partially blocked. Stays Michigan ball for Bo Lockwood. Waiting to see more of that elite passing game from number two in the white. Feet inside, going to the goal. Score! The captain, Aronson. What a huge goal for the Michigan Wolverines. This game is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What a finish inside. Aronson just breaks free, takes the extra couple steps to get a great angle, bounces it home. Do not go anywhere. We have got a ball game. Folks, later tonight, a champion will be crowned in the 2024 Big Ten Hockey Tournament. Michigan, Michigan State renewing their rivalry. Live coverage beginning with a pregame show tonight at 7.30 Eastern. That's only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Two teams that know their way around a hockey rink there. I'd say. Yes. The Sparty and Go Blue. Huge weekend for Big Ten sports, right, Joe? You got Absolutely. Penn State claiming a national championship in wrestling a day ahead of time yesterday and the ice hockey championship tonight, both men's and women's basketball in the NCAA tournament. We have got a beauty on our hands right here. Session one of the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics wow. settled in and led to our lacrosse action here from Ann Arbor on a chilly day. Temperatures have been mostly in the upper 30s. Bame is trapped at the midline. It comes up Michigan, Wheatfelt, the faceoff man flings it back on and Bame comes up to gain possession in what is a 10-10 game. Wow, you want to talk about five or six things that just happened in that ground ball sequence. Weirman taking the ball away from Wheatfelt. Bain getting a huge ground ball. Weirman showing his strength, pushing him into two attackmen for the Terps. And then ultimately the Wolverines coming up with a team ground ball. That was some big boy lacrosse we just witnessed. Cohen lost the handle, had it checked away. McNaney overran the ground ball, but Maryland 
comes up with it. This is the Maryland team that is the flagship in Big Ten men's lacrosse since 2015 when Maryland uh, came aboard in conference play, 38 and seven. Pretty special record. A.J. Larkin with another huge play with the strip of Ryan Cohen. Stamos kept to the outside by Cajal Roberts. It's getting late in regulation now. Every offensive trip means that much more when we're tied up at 10. It was Michigan by one at the end of three quarters. Spanos isolating against Billy. Spanos gets topside, feeds it. Downhill Syracuse, kick saved by Taylor. That was gorgeous, both the execution of that play, the shot, and then the kick save from Taylor. That was amazing. Spanos off the split dodge, feed it inside, drawing a crowd, they keep it hot. Syracuse rips from the outside. If at first you don't succeed. Maltz with an assist from his back. How many highlight reels is this kid gonna make today? Look at him falling down, has the presence of mind to know where Syracuse is. He is on his back and has the wrist strength to get it to Syracuse and look at the placement of that shot. He went low off stick, previous got it saved. That time he changes the level, goes mid biscuit on Taylor and finds the back of the cage. I was gonna ask you, Mark, take me inside the mind of a shooter. Wheatfelt sends it over top of the goal, but you just were stopped. You were just robbed there by Taylor, and yet you still have the confidence to go back in that same vicinity. He was in a great shooting spot on both opportunities, and it's a split-second decision. But you're like, hey, I went, I went low to low last time. Let me go low to mid, and changing that level hits pay dirt for number 38 in red. It worked, it gives Maryland the lead, three and a half minutes left. Zapatello sprinting after Bain. Bain turns the corner and he whistled it high. He wishes he had that one back. You don't get that type of hands-free action against one in red. Backed up on the end line, Michigan maintains possession. Canfield against Lockwood. Off the pick set there by Mulholland. Lockwood will try it again. Slamming on the brakes. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Mulholland edging towards the goal through a shoulder there. Looking for some contact to roll off. Tiernan, a fling from the sh shoulder that sailed wide. Still Michigan ball. Tiernan directing traffic. Cohen brings it in off the end line. Off the split against McDonald. Cohen traded off to Sharkey. Colin Sharkey, the grad transfer from Vermont. Cohen finds Tiernan from zero angle and he rams it home. A sliver of space was all he needed. The crowd loves it. They're blowing kisses to the Michigan offense. Cohen. You can't let him have his hands free that way. And Tiernan locates the upper 90 and punishes it with a high to high dart. What a shot by Tiernan, but Ryan Cohen behind the cage. You gotta get a stick in the gloves of number 40 and white to disrupt that feeding motion. Tiernan had four against Notre Dame. He has four on average to lead the nation per game. He's got four today and Michigan has the ball. Pedersen against Stamos with 228 left. You know, the transfer portal giveth and it taketh away. Josh Sawada, a mainstay here in Ann Arbor the last several years, transfers for graduate year to Duke. Justin Tiernan comes their way, courtesy of Lehigh. What a performance by 44 and White thus far in this contest. Bame will jog it to the corner against Zapatello as time hits two minutes to play in the fourth with lacrosse on the Big Ten Network. Bame getting a flight path towards the cage. Lockwood will find Cohen backpedaling away. Multi-goal games for Cohen in six of his first eight. Gets to the interior, that was a tough catch for Tiernan. 
Kohler comes up with the scoop first time. Whistles Blair out. It's a push against Maryland that gives Michigan the ball. Yeah, force inside by Cohen, and Michigan is fortunate. That's the right call. Tiernan was shoved from behind when the ball was loose, and it looks like Maryland, someone just took a timeout. Maryland likes to do that on defense when they were in a reorganized, but Michigan, they could have called it as well just to get a good play with another reset of the shot clock. It's been an incredible lacrosse day for a standing room only crowd here in Ann Arbor. I thought Cohen was going to pull the cord right there, but there he feeds inside and there's just a continuation. Stamos, his momentum carrying him up the field, just trying to make a play. Makes contact with the back of number 44 and white Justin Tiernan. That earns the play on, loose ball push, possession staying with Michigan. Kevin Connery was talking about the excitement for the program from the students, the surrounding community. They've been treated to a wonderful lacrosse game today. And their opponents, the Maryland Terrapins, have had their moments as well. Sequences that have led to brilliant conclusions at yeah. the offensive end. Yeah, 9-7, Michigan goes up. It looks like they're going to take control of the game. And then A.J. Larkin with the pole goal in transition. That's a gigantic one. But then Michigan wins the ensuing faceoff. This is a beautiful save by Logan McNaney. And how about this one for a shot clock buzzer beater? Three consecutive plays that we should be seeing on the big show. And then Maltz, how about a fourth? I don't want to shortchange number 37 in red. Highlight real plays for Maryland to get back in this game. But credit Michigan, they've had an answer every single time and they've got possession with a minute 37 seconds left in this ball game. Let's see what Scott Vita and his offensive troops can can uh, can formulate during this timeout. Meanwhile, Maryland showing its mettle and having this daunting schedule ahead. You and I will see them in Penn State, at Penn State, on the weekend. And that's going to be a terrific ball game. You know, Penn State opens up their Big Ten slate tomorrow in Columbus against the Ohio State Buckeyes. But that's a team that is hungry to get back to the game's biggest stage. Kevin Connery and his troops, they'll saddle up for a, a date at Johns Hopkins, remembering Homewood Field so fondly from last year's Big Ten Tournament. And he's a graduate of Johns Hopkins University, played lacrosse there. And the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays looking to bounce back from a tough out-of-conference loss a week ago to Navy. They'll go up on the banks. We'll have it for you tomorrow on Big Ten Network against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I bumped into another former Blue Jay, Joel Tinney, who's now a volunteer coach on Kevin's staff here in Ann Arbor. Beautiful moves, Cohen turns the corner. McNaney made the save. Logan McNaney, huge in the goal for Maryland in an 11-11 tie with 1.15 left. Unsettled situation. Tiernan breaking to the net. Dives and scores! With a flag. Tiernan has his fifth. Officials call it a good goal. Tiernan ends up in the goal mouth, but he was pushed to get there. Remember, there's no video review in the Big Ten in 2024. This is reminiscent. A couple years ago, we were just talking about Hopkins and Ohio State. The game winner in the Big Ten tournament here off of a turnover, off of a clear. Several. Nice ground balls picked up by the Maryland Poles, but the relentless ride of the Michigan Wolverines. There we see the push. Tiernan finishes, ends up in the goal mouth. Flag is out, so we do have a penalty. And the referees determined that Tiernan was not in the crease and was pushed illegally into the goal mouth. Goal's good. Maryland takes the timeout. Officials today, Tyler Harriman, Josh Sexton, Adam Pietrocarlo working and presiding over this game, which has been a thriller on Big Ten Network. Right now, facing a Maryland team that knows if they get it to overtime, how well they've performed in the extra sessions so far in this early spring, already with three OT wins under their belt. They need the ball. Wheatfelt and Weirman procedure. It goes. Possession, Maryland, and a chance to tie right now. Big call, Maryland on the offense. They've got a minute to work with. Let's see what they cook up. They're gonna call a timeout, talk about it, and try to get this game level. Three of the Terps' first five wins 
coming in overtime at Richmond, at Syracuse, and against Brown. They need one to force the extra session today. And if you are offensive coordinator for Maryland, Michael Phipps, who's likely to be at the top of your to-do list? You know, I, I think the play will start with either a Mulliver or a Spanos. And I say Spanos because you're going to be looking for some type of mismatch. Mulliver for distribution. Irksa, Maltz, I think they're going to be on the, on the end of the play. If you want to throw a wild card in there, number 22 in red, Jack Chorus. Incredible cutter, great off ball. It could be some window dressing, dodging-wise, and find number 22 streaking to the cage. It's an incredibly competitive Big Ten conference. We look at the schedule all around. We mentioned that there are two games coming up tomorrow. Penn State at Ohio State. Hopkins at Rutgers. And you're looking at the Nittany Lions and the Buckeyes both played quality out of conference competition. Penn State unofficially winning the Ivy League, knocking off Yale and Cornell. The Buckeyes played Denver tough last weekend. Hopkins, again, we talked about that Navy loss, but they own out of conference victories. Their biggest being the Virginia Cavaliers and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Knobloch, Ross Scott. They are some great goal scorers in front of Carton Stolen, the reigning Big Ten goaltender of the week, uh, specialist of the week, as well as freshman of the week. You and I will reconvene for Penn State, Maryland on Sunday. Will Peden, the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week, for his performance against Marquette. Right now, though, all eyes, 50 seconds left in regulation. Terps need to tie, one to tie, and force this game beyond regulation. They can hold it for the final possession. Irksa off the spin. Murphy over the top. Stab there. Taylor makes the save. Michigan needs a successful cleat. Taylor showing good legs all afternoon. Launches this one. Pedersen at 6-4 managed to track it down. Wolverines have it in the offensive third. 20 seconds away from the finish line. Maryland has never lost in Ann Arbor. He winning each of its first four tries. There was a whistle before the shot. A whistle before Tiernan deposited that into the empty goal. Yeah, Tiernan was in no man's land. Good timeout by Kevin Connery. The offensive possession for Maryland. The interesting adjustment. Owen Murphy, number 55 in red, was on, running with the first midfield of Chorus and Spanos in place of Ryan Syracusa. He's the one that takes the shot. It was a great look, had his hands free, had some space. The placement just not there as Taylor makes the clean save. Little, little surprise with the way Syracuse has been shooting it today, but Murphy, he can bring it. But credit number 52 in the maize and blue with a terrific save. And now Michigan will try to just run this game out. Just under 15 seconds remaining. 19-year-old sophomore Hunter Taylor, double-figure saves in six of nine this season. His biggest stop right there, sending us towards the conclusion of regulation with 14.8 to go. Michigan huddling up, they have possession. What can Maryland do to try and force a much needed turnover? It'll be interesting to see what they do because McNaney with the knee, does he leave the crease? Do they double the ball and leave the goal open? Or do they just double the ball right off of the whistle and then just try between, it looks like Will Schaller, number 27, and they're only gonna single it. Schaller is gonna be the guy working against Bain, and they're shutting everyone else off. So this is mano a mano, 27 in red versus five in white. 13th all-time meeting between these two. Michigan trying to win for the third straight time. Schaller hawking against Bain. Here comes the help from McNeeny on the double. Bain splits it. Doesn't go to the empty cooker. Three seconds left, back behind to Cohen. Michigan on alumni weekend, they'll storm off the sideline. Victorious, they take down the Terps, 12-11.